Hello, my name is Rasmus Bokrans and I'm head of the algorithm group at RaySearch. In this video, I will present multi-criteria optimization in RayStation, which is one of the true differentiators of the system. RaySearch was the first company to introduce MCO technology in 2011, and since then we have improved it with every release. Let's have a look at an example. Here is a head and neck case with a primary tumor and an elective nodal target. As these volumes cannot be treated without also exposing healthy organs to those, a core aspect of the treatment preparation is to make decisions regarding how target coverage should be balanced against the risk of toxicity. Conventionally, such trade-offs are articulated through the formulation of objectives, but the plan that is obtained after an optimization often does not match how we want to treat the patient, and this is not surprising given that what is achievable is not known on beforehand. Uh, parameters such as weights uh, and dose levels and other parameters in, in the formulation of objectives may need to be adjusted multiple times, and even if the end result is satisfactory, uh, you still do not know if a better treatment plan is possible. So let's now switch over to the MCO module and look at how treatment planning can be performed in a much more structured and time efficient way. Here in MCO, there are no weights associated with the objectives. Instead, each objective has an associated slider that can be used to control this dose distribution. This particular dose represents delivery with a single vehement arc over 32 fractions, and the dose distribution has been generated without any user interaction. The right protein gland is represented by the blue curve in the DVH window. If I take the slider for the right protein and pull it down, then the blue curve immediately shifts to a lower dose. You can see the same effect in the dose distribution over here. If I continue to pull the slider down, then dose is pulled out from the protein gland, representing a higher priority given to the sparing of that structure. While I slide, all other sliders move as well, and this is because the dose distribution we see is pretty optimal, meaning that no objective can be improved without worsening others. The sliders allow me to explore, for instance, to which extent the target coverage needs to be sacrificed in order to achieve a certain level of sparing of an organ at risk. These checkboxes to the left can be used to prevent undesired dose changes. If I, for instance, select the checkbox for the right protein and the left protein. This creates restrictions for the other sliders, as you can see reflected by the gray areas. I can now continue and improve target coverage without being at risk of an increased dose to the protein glands. The full user interface is updated in real time when sliding, including the dose statistics over here and the clinical goals. This immediate feedback makes it easy to, for instance, find a navigation state where all clinical goals are satisfied. Any navigation state can be converted to a deliverable plan with the most minor dose differences. This is thanks to an interpolation technique that is unique for RayStation, which allows machine parameters to be created on the fly based on the current navigation state. These machine parameters are used as a starting point for a dose mimicking optimization that further minimizes differences. This optimization takes about one or two minutes, just like a regular VMAT optimization. Here's the result. The solid lines in the DVH window indicate the deliverable plan, while the navigating dose is indicated by dotted lines, which are barely visible because of the close overlap with the deliverable plan. The small existing dose differences are visible in this dose difference view, where an increase in between 1 and 2 gray is indicated in red, while a decrease of the same magnitude is indicated in blue. The existing differences are almost entirely located within unclassified tissue, and it's therefore safe to say that they are on the magnitude that do not influence clinical decision making. MCO provides tremendous opportunities for changing clinical practice. Several studies have shown that it can substantially reduce manual planning time without compromising plan quality. For instance, a study on brain and pancreatic cancer patients reported an average reduction of in manual planning times by two hours, while another study on small cell lung cancer reported 
an average reduction in manual planning times by a little less than one and a half hours. Both these studies, as well as others, also report that physicians prefer plans generated by MCO over plans generated by standard methods in blinded assessments. Another interesting scientific observation is that MCO makes the prescribing oncologist more closely involved in the treatment planning process. This finding can be attributed to the fact that the treatment planner and the oncologist can generate the plan in a single meeting where they sit together and have all options available at their fingertips. MCO is a shift away from the trial and error associated with standard inverse planning. It allows treatment planners and oncologists to, on a sliding scale, explore how those to one structure can be traded against those who are elsewhere in the patient. And thanks to the deliverable navigation technique, what you see is also what you get. Please go to our website to find out more, to download white papers, or to book a demo. Thank you.